Okay, we're going to make worm tea today. It's going to have to percolate for 24 hours. Sometimes I let it go longer than that, but I never stop it short of that. The idea is we're going to take worm castings, worm poop, and we're going to put it in a bag, and we're going to put that in water with some additives, and then we're going to bubble air through it for 24 hours. And that's the basic process. And then after the 24 hours, we're gonna we're gonna put it in a sprayer. We're gonna filter it, put it in a sprayer, and just a little simple handheld sprayer. And we spray it, spray it on the plants, and that's good for it's good for uh, feeding the plants. It's called foliar feeding. And these microorganisms apparently do a terrific job in just vitalizing the plants. Uh, and I've also used it for uh, blight on potatoes and tomatoes, and it seems to help. I think it makes the plant stronger and thereby, thereby able to fight off the disease. Here's some rainwater that we pumped out of the main barrel into this reserve barrel here. Let's start with that much. Now, what I'll do is, I'll take a little bit of this fish emulsion. It's something I want to learn how to make myself. It's fairly expensive stuff, but I've had this for a few years. A little goes a long way. I'm just going to put a little squirt of it in there. Like that, maybe a teaspoonful or so. I don't really know exactly how much I put in of anything. I don't think it's too critical. And then I'll take these organic molasses here. I'll put these in. Yeah, so this uh, feeds the bacteria. Then we'll put some lemon juice in. It gives it a little ascorbic acid. Just put a squirt of that in. Put a little more of that in than the other. Double, double toil and trouble. As right, so we get that kind of mixed up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some worm castings and we're going to put them in this tea bag that I made out of an old gunny sack. They usually say maybe a shovel full or so for a five gallon parrot pail. It's pretty good rich looking stuff. It's worm castings. We find worms in them too. And I'll just tie a little rope around it. And we just put it down in here. And we can add a little water to it too now. Just have a little water left. The little critters in there have to keep it a supply of oxygen. So I just got this little aquarium pump for aerating an aquarium. And then I got a little valve on here that controls the flow of air. And then on the end of this, I've got just a stone for the, to buy at the aquarium store. You get a lot of nifty stuff at the aquarium store. This one's pretty clean. Sometimes I gotta scrape garbage off of them. Now I'm gonna put the stone down in here, like that. And then I got I can find a use for everything. This old rubber soled moccasin of mine I kept. And well I'll demonstrate. If I put the pump down on here and then plug it in. kind of vibrates and waltzes around a little bit. Sometimes it's kind of, it's just, it just doesn't sit very still. I take my moccasin and I put it in there. And now it's just as stable as can be. And it just keeps bubbling through and then when I walk by every once in a while I'll move the stone, but I don't know if it makes much difference or not. It's a very simple process. 
and we come back 24 hours later and then we can uh, we'll filter this stuff out and uh, put it in the sprayer and then spray it on the garden. This stuff has cooked now for more than 24 hours actually. I figure 24 hours is a minimum and by cook I mean has had air bubbled through it as we started out with. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to filter what's left in there. Oh, I've got this fancy filter here which is an old t-shirt and then I just put it in a funnel like this and then I, I just scoop it out of the bin pour it into the funnel. Well, this is the last of it in here now. I did a load before. There's sediment down in the bottom of the of the container here and I'm trying not to get in here but it'll filter out. What do you think about you might need a fancy filtering system but really you don't. <laughs> so now we've just got our stuff here and this I'll just wash out in a rain barrel. You can't even see anything that collected on here. Sometimes there's more, sometimes less. I've got this simple little hand-operated, handheld sprayer here. So I just pour this in here. You can see how clear that is. I mean, the outside of the jar is dirty, but it's really a nice, clear liquid. I use this stuff for potato blight and tomato blight and I don't know if it just strengthens the plant or if it uh, or if it actually with the additives I put in here if it has some sort of effect on any disease. I sprayed apple trees with it too but the apple crop this year is not very good because we blossom too early. Oh, I'll only get a few apples. Now we we'll screw this on tight like this. This is a kind of nice design. It screws down and gets snug. Got to make sure that this guy, which is the bleed, that bleeds the pressure off. And then all you do is you got this loose and you can pump it up. So let's take it outside and see what we can do. So we just take the sprayer here and we just work this up and down and that will pressurize the tank. I repeat, no pesticides were ever used in this. And we got a little trigger on here and we just spray. This is cabbage we're spraying here. See they're forming heads. Those little holes are probably caused by insects too and away on these. Have it looking fairly good. Good crop of tomatoes coming so far. And I suppose you could be careful to get it on everything, but I just like to do enough. And here's those potatoes. That these volunteers that popped up among the tomatoes. Let's see how that goes. I always like to do an experiment if I can. And I just keep pumping here. Keeps the pressure up. It's good exercise. And that covers this half of what's on the trellis. Good for the plants.